Good day everyone and happy Halloween. Welcome to my series known as Goat Guides. We go in depth and examine the various decks of the most famous retro Yu-Gi-Oh format of all time. Now since we're in the month of Halloween, I thought what better deck to begin this series with than the spookiest deck in all of Yu-Gi-Oh, Zombies. While never reaching the top echelons of Goat format, Zombies are one of the few decks that are powerful enough to go toe to toe with the likes of Chaos, Warriors and of course Goat Control. In fact, Zombies is one of the few non-GOAT decks to top back in the actual 2005 GOAT format. Let's take a look and see why, shall we? Let's begin with the main card that makes Zombie decks a major contender in GOAT format, Pyramid Turtle. Now around this time, several monsters received a card that could search more of that type from the deck. Dragons with masked dragons, insects got howling insect, etc. And of course, we also had attribute searches like Mystic Tomato and Shining Angel, which are widely played in GOAT format. However, one major advantage Pyramid Turtle has over these is the width of the cards it can search. Most of these other searches can only hit a card with 1500 or less attack. The turtle, by comparison, can hit any zombie with 2000 or less defense. And for those who don't know, that's pretty much every zombie worth playing in this format. In fact, this card is such a key to this deck, we additionally run 2-3 copies of Giant Rat for the sole purpose of searching it out. And our final searcher of the deck is of course Sangan which is a staple in this format. You can search turtles and rats and other cards that we'll be talking about later on in this video. Okay, so we have our searches. What are we actually searching up? Let's start out with the smallest card in our Undead Horde, Spirit Reaper. Now don't be fooled by his tiny stats. This guy is one of the most annoying and powerful cards in the format. In fact, he's so powerful that he actually dominated the very next format, the appropriately named Reaper format. Why you ask? Well firstly, this card is one of the hardest to remove in the format. Being able to be destroyed by battle means this card will often stick around for a few turns soaking up ta attacks. It is true that this card will be destroyed if it's targeted by something, which means that cards like Book of Moon double as removal against this card. However, this often means that your opponent has to sacrifice a piece of interaction in order to deal with the weakest monster in your entire deck. However, this card isn't just a good defensive option, as it can also be used on the offense. Whenever this card does damage to your opponent, they have to discard a card at random from their hand. Now as you've seen, by the prevalence of cards like Trap Dust Shoot and Delinquent Duo, hand attack is a very powerful thing. But I think you're asking, how is this small guy going to ever hit? Well, we'll get into that a bit later on in the video. Moving up the power level, we have Regenerating Mummy. Being an 1800 body and a beatdown deck already makes this card decent. However, what really makes this card a staple in zombie decks is its ability to add back to its hand when discarded. With Delinquent Duo and Trap to Shoot being two of the most powerful cards in GOAT format and card destruction on the rise in Chaos decks, having ways to quote, duo proof your deck is an important thing to have as it keeps you from falling way behind in terms of card advantage. This deck also runs a copy of Sinister Serpent for the same reason, as hitting these cards with Duo turns the card from a plus one card advantage to a neutral trade-off, as the opponent has lost their Duo and you will lose just one card. If you wanted to further Duo proof your deck, you could also throw in a copy of the card Fear from the Dark, which is a dark level 4 zombie that when discarded by an opponent's card effect summons itself directly to your field. I personally prefer playing the Mummy for the higher attack points, but you can either play both depending on the deck, or if you want to play a more tribute focused build, you may want to go with Despair as adding an extra body to the board makes it easier to sacrifice on the next turn. Also if you want to play a bit more of a casual deck, you could also run Des Despair from the dark, a 20 ender attack monster with the same effect as Fear. Obviously nothing you'd run in the more competitive builds, as you don't want to get a 2 tribute monster stuck in your hand. But it is hilarious when your opponent turn 1 doers you, only to have this massive thing drop on their field. Topping our zombie curve, we have the two best trippy monsters that Pyramid Turtle can grab for us, Vampire Lord and Rio Koki. Now it's often up to personal choice as to the ratio of these cards, usually one of one and two of the other, and it's not wise to play more than four trippy monsters in any non-monarch deck. So let's look what these cards can do and decide our ratio for ourselves. In the past, this was often a no-brainer, as Vampire Lord was seen as not only the most powerful zombie in the game, but also the best non-monarch tribute monster. Firstly, its 2000 attack points often made it difficult for aggressive decks to beat over, as the only widely played monsters in this format that can beat Vampire Lord in battle are the Chaos Monsters and the aforementioned Monarchs. 
This often means an opponent will have to use another method of getting rid of him, which ties into the second reason this card is good. That being that when he is destroyed by a card effect, he'll come right back to the field on the next turn, meaning cards such as Ring of Destruction and Sakuratsu Armor are often wasted keeping this guy at bay for a turn, and he just laughs at the opponent's mirror force. Finally, of course, we have his ability. When he does damage to an opponent, he allows us to name one kind of card, Monster Spell or Trap, and have our opponent send that kind of card from their deck to the graveyard. All these things considered, Vampire Lord is definitely a powerful card in GOAT format, and one card you should definitely consider playing in your zombie builds. However, I would argue that with the direction the format has gone over the last couple of years, he's not as powerful as he used to be. First of all, the main boss monsters of Chaos, Chaos Sorcerer and Black the Soldier, both have abilities that can remove monsters from the, from the game, making Vampire Lord's most powerful ability next to useless. They can also both beat over him in battle if they need to. And finally, while sending a card from your opponent's deck to the graveyard is powerful in this format, especially against decks like Goat Control, you're basically rest restricted to non-monsters when you're playing against Chaos, as you'd just be helping them get out these two monsters by, by filling the graveyard for the opponent. Because of this, I'd argue that Ryokoki is the better choice in modern GOAT format. While not as flashy as Vampire Lord, Ryokoki is a very straightforward effect. If it battles a warrior or spellcaster, it destroys the monster at the end of the damage step. Oh, and look at that! Both BLS and Chaos Sorcerer are warriors and spellcasters, respectively. Who would know it? Coupled with the fact that Ryokoki can also take out cards like Dark Magician of Chaos, I'd argue he is the superior zombie these days. As such, in my build, I'll be running two real Kokis and one Vampire Lord in the main, with a second Vampire Lord at the side deck for, for control matchups. Outside of our zombie core, we run many of the GOAT format staples, including Break of the Magical Warrior as a beat stick and a potential back row popper, Tribe Infecting Virus as a board wipe, and potentially Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer as a main deck answer to Chaos. Being an aggro deck, we could also splash elements of both warrior decks and beast decks, but I'll talk about those more in their own videos coming up in the future. Moving on to the spell cards, let's begin with the one zombie specific card for this deck, Book of Life. Book of Life allows us to revive any zombie from our graveyard, and also lets us banish one monster from our opponent's graveyard. Please note that the graveyard banish effect is not optional, so you need to ensure that your opponent will have a, cre a monster to remove in order to activate this effect. The more spell heavy variants of this deck will combo this card with Tribute to the Doomed, which allows us to destroy any monster on the opponent's side of the field at the cost of discarding a monster from our hand. The combo is quite obvious. Discard the zombie you wish to bring back with tribute, then use Book of Life to bring it back, bashing the monster you just destroyed with tribute. With an ideal opening hand, this allows us to have a turn 1 vampire lord attacking directly, draining another card from our opponent's deck, something that our opponent will find very difficult to out early on in the game. Another spell of note in this deck is Creature Swap. Since our recruiter cards all trigger on entering our graveyard, this card really is a no-brainer, as by swapping one of our turtles, our rats or our sand guns with an opponent's monster, we're not only taking a card from them, we're also getting another one of our own by triggering these cards' effects. So for example, we can use Creature Swap to take, say, our opponent's Breaker the Magical Warrior and giving them our Pedimid Turtle, destroy the turtle with said Breaker, and then use the turtle's effect to put either Spirit Reaper or a big boss like Vampire Lord or Ryokaki onto our field for more card advantage. Outside of these cards, our deck runs most of the GOAT staples. Obviously, like most decks, we run Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity and Delinquent Duo. Not much to say here except for the fact that Graceful Charity's discard is another way to set up the grave for Book of Life. We also run other staples such as Snatch Steel, Premature Burial, Mystical Space Typhoon and of course Heavy Storm. Finally, let's look at the traps in this deck. Much like the spells, traps can differ depending on the build we're going with. If we're going with the more spell heavy build, this section will be very short. We play one call of the hunt for additional revivals and three royal decrees to prevent other traps from activating. This particular build of the deck makes this deck very powerful against other anti meta options such as gravekeepers and warriors, both of which tend to use a heavy trap lineup. Going with the more traditional build of this deck, we find similar amounts of traps to the decks we just mentioned, as Zombies is also an aggressive deck that seeks to disrupt control in order to win quickly. Firstly in this build, we'll play the staple cards including Mirror Force, Ring of Destruction, Torrential Tribute, Dust Tornado and potentially Sakuretsu Armor. In addition to these cards, we'll also play the more aggro-focused traps, including Trap Dust Shoot to take away cards from control, and of course, Solemn Judgment, because who cares about half our life points winning before turn 10? It's more important that our opponent can't get their key piece off, such as BLS. 
Other options to consider include Jar of Greed to help us regain resources late game and to bait our heavy storms and mystical space typhoons, and Compulsory Evacuation Device as it can clear fields in order for us to swim for direct attack if necessary. Like in any TCG, side decking will always depend on meta. However, here's some of the cards I ran in my recent side decks. If I'm not maining it, then three copy of Kaiku for, to answer chaos, two or three copies of Mind Control to take advantage of my opponent's flip effect monsters, as well as making them, their chaos monsters blow themselves up, two or three copies of Mask of Restrict for monarchs and some zombie mirrors, two or three royal decrees to my traditional zombie deck to deal with other aggro decks, three or four flip killers such as Blade Knight and Mystic Swordsman, one Necromone King to deal with Empty Jar, and a found deck tech I've been trying out is Meteor Rain, which is a trap that grants pierce piercing, which gives zombies a good way to beat over traditional goat messers. Zombies may not be quite a top tier deck in goat format, however they are a very powerful option that is able to keep up with the top tier decks. If you are a player who likes to play more aggressively, but is tired of playing warriors and tiger decks, zombies may be a very good change of pace for you, and will allow you to sneak in wins against chaos and control decks. I hope you all enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe if you did, and I'll see you guys in the next one.